Hello everyone, welcome back to my YouTube channel. I'm Rohit and this is the day 29 of the service portal training. In this day, we'll talk about a little bit advanced topic in the service portal. So that is called Angular Provider. So what is Angular Provider and how we can create our own Angular Provider and use in our service portal in future references. So let's see how we can implement that Angular Provider. So let's first understand that what is the Angular Provider and then how we can use the Angular Provider. So if you see under the service portal module, so if I type the service portal, under the service portal, we have a, a module called Angular Provider. And if you open the Angular Provider, under this Angular Provider, we have a type. And if you click new here under this Angular Provider, you will have a type called directory, factory, and services. These three options you have. So what is this and how we can use that? These things we'll talk about, and then we'll actually implement that Angular Provider in our today's class. So first thing first, um, if you remember in our last class, we implement that custom reference width. And if I go back to this widget editor, now we can see that we use that ASN record picker and SP data picker. And these things, ASN record picker or ASN data uh, date picker, these are um, actually the custom built by service portal or service now itself. Okay, so there is no out of box in Angular JS. There is no kind of thing, this kind of thing. So this is. Uh, we know that these kind of things we call the uh, directory okay so we know that this is the directory but how we can create our own directory based on our own use cases that things we'll talk about that so that we call that angular provider so basically angular provider help you to create your own directory like that and then that can have functionality based on the functionality you can work as per our expectation okay so uh, let's see that so first Thing, what we'll do, I'm going to create a, a button so that whenever you click the button, it will it can have uh, redirect to a particular page. So for that, what I have to actually do, let's say, let's understand here what I have to do for this button. So for this button, I will put the button here and then here I'll uh, put that uh, code call go to page, something like that. And here what we have to do. Here I need to put the ng underscore click under this ng click. I have to um, uh, put that redirect something like that. And then here what I have to do, I have to go to this client's controller and then declare the scope and then under this scope, what I have to do dollar the scope, right? And then I need to put this function and here uh, I can put that dollar location dot search. And then here I can put that ID equal to maybe some page called, um, you know, uh, index. Okay. So this is, uh, this might be the, our use case. So let's say that I'll inject the location. So this is um, to create this button. And if we want to put some CSS, we need to be put the CSS on this button. Let's say that in this button, I want to put that class. And then here I will say that uh, button something like that. So this button will be um, help me to redirect to a particular page, right? So let's say refresh this page. And once we click that uh, this page, it will redirect me to this particular index page, right? So now uh, uh, these things, let's say that this functionality is a complex functionality and there will be a lot of functionality. So um, I should go and check the list of record and show the list of record and maybe there are many functionality. This complete functionality I want to inject and I don't want to, you know, write the code because I were, I'm going to use these things multiple places over the multiple places. So I don't want to uh, write the whole code again, again and again, these things, okay? For that, how we can do that, so that's uh, custom, how we can create our custom own directive, that's things we are going to talk about in our today's class first. So let's say I'm going to create our own directory. So for that, what I'll do, I'll go to this Angular provider and then click new button. Under this new button, uh, if you see here, whenever we are creating this button, we have some dash, you can see each and every time we are putting some dash, right? So what will be the naming convention for that? So we need to put that directory and then we need to put this camel case. So let's say for this date picker, if I am, I'm going to create a custom directory for date picker, what will be happen? I need to remove this dash and then I need to put this D and then here I need to remove this 
something called the name should be like that sp date picker something like that so instead of when you put capital letter it means that you should put the dash and then small letter uh, when you are actually going to implement here so similarly i'm going to create a button in our, our own directory here so let's say i'll put that sp uh, click button okay so this will be like sp click button this might be my name and then uh, what um, what will be happen i need to write certain code so let's write the code for that what we have to do we have to declare a function here under call cell function and under this we need to put certain functionality okay so first functionality is that we need to put the template under this template we need to define the html actually so let's put that we need to define the html how our button will be looks like that or whatever component we need to be inject in this button we need to be put that in our html so i'll let's say i'll copy this whole code here under this button so button will be looks like this one okay so this will be our button okay and what will be happening in this cell function it will be return a self object okay so, so we'll do like this one now simply i will save that okay so this directory is saved right now and what it is going to return that it is going to return or it is going to be a directory and that will have called the button so let's implement this in our portal. So I'm instead of this one. Now what we have to do, we need to put the name called sp dash click slash button. Okay. So in this way, if we put this sp dot uh, this button, what will be happen? This button or this directory will be called from there, and then this directory will be uh, referred. So let's refresh that. The button um, is not visible at that moment. You can see this button is still not visible because we have to go back to that uh, um, in that widget platform view. So I'm going to this widget platform view right now. Under this widget platform view, if I scroll down, under this we have an Angular provider. We need to attach this Angular provider that we are going to use that. So let's say our case SP click Angular provider button so that we have created SP click. I'll add this button and save that. So right now, um, the provider that we have created is connected with the widget, and then um, this but this provider is used in our HTML code or on this widget. And if we refresh here, now the button should be visible here. And now you can see the button is visible, and you can see once I am clicking that, it is going to this uh, page called Go to Page. Now what we can do instead of this function also, I don't want to put this function here. Instead of that, what I can do, I can move this function to this here um, in this case to do that. And what I'll do, I'll write that called controller. Under this controller, whatever was there inside the function, I will just copy and paste it. So I'll cut that from here and save that. And uh, I just, Cut that. So if I refresh that at that moment, uh, if we click go to page, it is not going to any of these pages. Now what we'll do? I'll paste here, and let's format this code again. So what we are doing? What we are saying that? So and before that, we need to put the function because if you see here under this function, we are going to inject this scope. So we are going to inject this scope here. And then we need to inject this location scope also here. And here we need to put a starting brace and then we should be put that one ending brace. Let's format this code and I'll just repeat one more time. So we created a controller. Under controller, we created a function like the way we did here. Um, controller, under this we have a function and then we are injecting two services here. So we injected these two services called scope and then location under this location we created a function so this is the function which is going to be called from here and this is the uh, uh, things that we are going to perform so we can bring this in a single line the way we are doing in in our um, they are called widget so i'll bring into the single line all right so we created a uh, template under this template we have whatever the purpose of that now we 
created a controller under this controller we created a function and then in this function we injected that whatever services we need and then under that we have declared the function let's save that at that moment and if we refresh that at uh, here and click go to page and you can see it started working uh, and taking the function from this angular provider now we can create this button in a different different way so first thing first is that we can uh, create this uh, as a element you can see this is the element okay now we can create let's say that we can cut there and then we can declare a div let's say we can declare a div like this one and then here we can declare one thing called um, this uh, as a attribute so we can do that so this is the another way you can simply use this uh, div and then here you can put this function name and if we refresh that also we can see this button so either you can use as a attribute or element depending on your use cases so now let's assume that uh, you need to be make the parameterize so right now if you see here under this here uh, whatever we are uh, clicking i mean whenever we are going to use this uh, button called sp click button as many time as we want it will go to the fixed value called index page now we want to make the dynamic so remember that using that um, if i open this my old page so remember that if i open this uh, sp sn record uh, picker we can pass see uh, various parameter you can see this we can pass this value which table we should point this uh, which table i should refer all this parameter we can pass that right so in our case how we can pass this parameter we'll discuss that to pass the parameter let's say that uh, the text that we are showing the go to page that text we are going to pass from here and then the page that we are going to index dot page that page also will pass from here okay so let's do that for that first what we'll do here under this we are going to create some parameter let's say that page um, custom page id something like that okay and in this case we are going to uh, type that which page it should go okay and next we are going to say that custom um, you can say that um, you can put any variable actually so I, I, any kind of attribute you can declare the custom text something like that and here we are going to pass the text called go home something like that so this text and this page we are going to pass that to our uh, we can say that in our um, I mean these things will be dynamic there is nothing called static for that what we'll do we'll go back and refresh our uh, here uh, this template first thing what we'll do we are going to declare the scope here so there will be a scope object under this scope object we have to declare a JSON under this JSON we need to take this uh, call this one is the one then we need to pull on and then we in the single uh, yeah, I mean in double quotes we need to uh, put equal to so that's the one attribute and then comma second attribute is that we are going to take this custom text so this custom text will be available here colon and then equal to and then I mean double colon and equal to so it means that we are going to mark this uh, custom page ID and custom text available under this scope so we can use here so that's over our um, you know identification that's what we are trying to say that so for that what we'll do we'll declare this variable then equal to sign declare the variable and equal to sign under this scope object now this text will be uh, replaced by this one right so we'll do that simply replace this one okay so this custom text will be replaced by this one okay and there will be one comma so we'll save that now if we refresh that this go to page will be uh you can see that it is going to custom text so let's see so it actually it will have that at the rate instead of um because equal to is used for the objects so we has to be has add the rate so we'll put this add the rate and save that one more time and if we refresh here you can see this go home is coming right now and in this widget whatever name we are going to pass like say that 
so this attribute is right now is it um, going to dynamic so whatever you will pass that that based on that is this will be take care now uh, here on uh, instead of index what we can do uh, we can going to use that dollar scope so we'll use a dollar scope dot um this custom this one so it will go to this page so let's save that so now our in this case our uh, this widget are more dynamic or maybe this directive is more dynamic we can pass this parameter and based on this parameter it can work so let's refresh one more time right now it is showing go home and if we click that it is going to the index page and if we change here call go to home instead of that go to home and then this case i'll say that form page it should go to the form page it will go over oh, that also so let's go back here and then refresh uh, so now instead of go home it will show the go to home and if we click that it is going to the form page so this way you can create your own directory and that directive can be reused over and over again based on your requirement so that's it for today if you have any question let me know in my comment section thank you very much have a great day